are many examples of survivors at sea. Kun Lim was a Chinese sailor working on a British merchant ship when it was sunk by a German U-boat on November 23, 1942. He survived 133 days alone in the South Atlantic, floating on an eight-foot square wooden raft. Richard Van Farn set out from Long Beach, California on his 26-foot sailboat heading for Catalina Island, a trip of about three hours. A storm wrecked his mast and ruined his motor. He had no family, had not filed a float plan, and was not reported missing. He was rescued by the US Navy on September 17, 2002, after being adrift for three and a half months, 4,000 kilometers away from his starting point. Morris and Marilyn Bailey left England for New Zealand. On March 4, 1973, the yacht was damaged by a whale. Over the next 117 days, they endured on an inflatable raft, suffering from malnutrition and sores and endured several storms. After traveling some 2,400 kilometers, they were rescued by a fishing boat. On January 27, 1971, Dougal Robertson departed from Falmouth, England, accompanied by his wife, daughter, and three sons. Over the next year and a half, they sailed across the Atlantic. On June 15, 1972, the boat was hauled by a pod of killer whales and sank. The group escaped to an inflatable life raft. On the 38th day as castaways, they were picked up by a Japanese fishing trawler. Stephen Callahan is an American author, naval architect, inventor, and sailor, most notable for having survived for 76 days adrift on the Atlantic Ocean in a life raft. Callahan recounted his ordeal in his best-selling book, Adrift, 76 Days Lost at Sea, which was on the New York Times bestseller list for more than 36 weeks. Those were a lucky few. A thousand others have perished at sea. At sea, everything is out to kill you. Storms and winds, waves and currents, thirst and hunger, the blazing sun and the darkness of the night, sharks and jellyfish, seasickness, sunburn and salt sores, boredom, loneliness, desperation and frustration. What does it take to survive at sea? Attitude is everything. positive attitude, along with using what meager gear and equipment is available, constantly adapting, innovating and improvising, staying hydrated, eating whatever can be salvaged, hoping and praying, and a whole lot of luck. Thirty days, floating in a life raft showcasing what can be done to survive alone at sea. Simulating a real life adrift scenario in just a basic life raft containing gear that is part of standard life rafts. Desalinator, fishing kit, harpoon, rescue line, paddles, whaler, pump, repair kit, sea anchor, whistle, waterproof torch, signaling mirror, signal card, signal flares, parachute rockets, and rainwater catching system. 10 days survival rations and 5 liters of water and a desperate will to survive. Drifting is a distinct possibility. If the current is flowing nearly at a speed of 5 kilometers per hour, the life raft will drift 120 kilometers every day. Over a 30-day period, there is a distinct possibility that the drift might cover 4,000 kilometers, give or take a few kilometers. The direction of this drift is not predictable. It will depend on the prevalent weather pattern, winds, tides, pressure, etc. This event is a simulated one, and one would not like to get lost at sea. The life raft will be tethered to a buoy 
to prevent drifting. A support boat will drop in every three days to check status. Two-way radios will be used for communications and there will be no extraction unless it is a medical emergency. Hopefully we will find food to eat. Maybe a bird will land on the raft. A turtle will be a treat. Otters are probably out. Maybe some fish will bite. Hopefully the raft won't leak. Hopefully the desalinator will work. Hopefully one is stung by a jellyfish. Some tips that are likely to be showcased. Desalinating water to drink. Collecting rainwater in case it rains. Writing the raft after a capsize. Preventing and treating sunburn. Treating saltwater sores. Spear fishing. Improvising fish bait. Catching birds for food. Sun drying fish and birds. Finding geographical coordinates. Signaling with a mirror, a flare gun, dyes, etc. Defecating and urinating sleeping, working with loneliness and boredom, maintaining the right mental attitude, finally, walking on sea legs. This event is tentatively scheduled for January 2016, off the coast of Azimala in Kerala. The survivor will be rescued at the end of 30 days. The event will be promoted online through the website and through social media. It will be extensively filmed and a documentary film produced. Hopefully video diaries and photographs will be uploaded periodically. The documentary will be screened in select cities. There is also a possibility of a multi-episode series on television. The event will be filmed entirely by the survivor using multiple HD cameras. Why? In the words of George Bernard Shaw, you see things and you ask why. But I dream of things that never were, and I say why not. This is a first for India. Adventure in all its forms is becoming increasingly popular. Actual as well as armchair adventurers are increasing. Survival programs are very popular on television. Nothing like this has ever been staged before. The canvas is unique and the packaging very different. The larger message is to get people to realize the need for survival training. This has been conceptualized and will be executed by Chandan Lahiri. He's a survival skills instructor, triple record holder, an adventurer and an explorer, and a survivalist.